Does innovation matter? Well, to help us answer that question, let's begin with this gentleman here. Uh, this is, of course, Charles Darwin, the famous biologist. He's particularly famous for saying in his theory that it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It's the one that's most adaptable to change. And that, of course, is the story for organisations today. It's about adapting to change, innovating successfully. Trouble is, it's a tricky environment. These days, life is very much like the world of Alice through the looking glass. Now, you might remember there's a famous scene in the book with the Red Queen, where Alice and the Queen have been running for a long time. And, and they pause for a moment, <gasps> gasping for breath. And Alice complains because she thinks, if you run that far that fast, you must get somewhere else. To which the Queen replies, well, that's a slow sort of country. Here, you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. So there's a powerful imperative for innovation. We need to change because we're in a changing world. We know this, and of course that's what's helped us as a species to survive. We don't have to look far back before we see just what a key role innovation plays. Think about the wheel, or fire, with all that meant in terms of being able to feed ourselves, and later on to process metals, which helped us make tools, which helped us build things. Uh, later on, we learned to communicate, first through grunts, then through scrawled language, eventually Gutenberg's printing press, and all that followed since then. We've talked a lot about healthcare, and clearly that's another big benefit that comes from innovation. We could carry on, but it really underlines the fact that as a species, our survival and growth has come through innovation. Now, who does it matter to? Well, many economists have looked at this question of innovation, and they of course argue, because economists do. But they come to more or less the same conclusion. Innovation is a powerful force behind economic growth. This chap's a good example. He's called William Baumol, and he concluded in his studies in the 1990s that virtually all the economic growth which has occurred since the 18th century is ultimately attributable to innovation. Uh, you can go back to Karl Marx, who believed innovation was the locomotive of economic growth. But perhaps this man made the biggest contribution to focusing our attention on innovation. He later on became the finance minister for Austria. Joseph Schumpeter was an important economist. He basically built a theory around entrepreneurs, seeing them as the driving force in the economy, the ones who make change happen and enable growth. In particular, he talks about a concept called creative destruction. Entrepreneurs, in his view, not only try to create new things, they also try to move things forward to destroy what's gone before, to put something better in its place. So this becomes a powerful engine for economic growth. Now, innovation matters beyond straightforward economic growth. Think about the impacts that economic growth has on employment, and in turn what that means for social welfare. All those businesses paying the taxes means we can have schools and hospitals and fire services and ambulances. And if we think about the wider world of social innovation, things like building a more sustainable planet or a more equal society, these are also consequences of innovation. Back in the 19th century, a man called John Coram decided it was important to have a hospital for those children found on the streets. His innovation was the Foundling Hospital, which you can still find in London today. Or one of the breakthrough innovations in the UK was its National Health Service, created 70 years ago as a means of providing health care for anyone that needed it. The same concept has been applied by Médecins Sans Frontières, taking medical care to emergency situations all around the world. And we've already seen the case of the Aravind Eye Care System, essentially an entrepreneur-driven social innovation trying to provide sight for people who would otherwise go blind. Something like 12 million people today who've had cataract problems can see who would otherwise have gone blind. Innovation also changes the way sectors rise and fall. Think about lighting. In the old days, we used to burn animal fats and make them into candles. It smelled terrible. 
But then someone came up with the idea of the oil lamp, and later on the gas lamp. Still later, Thomas Edison came up with his electric light, or Joseph Swan, or many others. The arguments continue about who came first, but it doesn't really matter. Their inventions became the innovations that changed the world. And these days the sector's changing once again. Light-emitting diodes, LEDs, are everywhere transforming the future of lighting, particularly in the direction of energy efficiency. And with each of these transitions, there's been a huge expansion of business and consumer applications. It's the same thing if we look at the music industry. Thomas Edison's famous gramophone, one of his many inventions, gave us a world where we had our music available. First on wax cylinders, then on various kinds of gramophone record. Later on, thanks to an invention by Philips, the compact cassette, uh, and many of us still have our music laboriously put onto such cassettes, then compact discs, and then something of a revolution. The idea of the MP3 player and digital music, music held in software, which in turn triggered surprising consequences. Music piracy, where people were sharing with each other the music they wanted and not always paying the royalties. And then Apple came along, a computer company, not a music company, with the iPod, but primarily with iTunes, the platform that enabled our legal way of working in this new technologically enabled way. Later on came another key question. Do we need to own the music at all? And that's how streaming services like Spotify emerged, which are once again changing the music industry. Now, these examples show the powerful role which innovation plays at a sector level. But of course, it's the same story at the level of the firm, the enterprise. Once again, there's an innovation imperative. If we don't change what we offer the world, our products and services, and the ways we create and deliver those, our processes, then we may not be around, we may not survive. So that's the logic behind growing, behind creating new businesses, and indeed behind social ventures. We've seen several examples, Zara, Procter & Gamble, Alibaba, Amazon, many examples. But it isn't always a story with a happy ending. There are many organizations which expand and grow, but there are others which then fail to innovate or fail to innovate fast enough. A good example is the story of Kodak, currently in Chapter 11 bankruptcy, not dead yet, but radically different to the kind of organization which dominated the 20th century. Or Sears, once the key name in retailing, now in serious trouble, again, Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Or Pan Am, one of many airlines which were big names in the early part of the 20th century, which helped build the airline industry after the war, but weren't able to innovate fast enough to stay with it. And Nokia, a humble timber products company which blossomed in the mobile phone world and then declined. And at the individual level, innovation is important. One of the key things about human beings is that creativity comes fitted as standard equipment. Everybody's creative. Everyone is capable of open-ended problem solving. Psychologists argue that that's one of the key breakthroughs in our evolution as a species. When we could imagine what other people thought and begin to put ourselves in their place, then we could begin to cooperate and build societies and then develop through our imagination the various innovations that we've seen. So imagination is a hugely important human skill and deploying it is what's kept us alive and growing. But there's another angle as well, which is something about making a difference, making an impact on the world, which motivates us. And that's what drives many entrepreneurs. If you ask them, why are they doing what they do? It's very little about the money and much more about the impact that they can have. And that's particularly true of social entrepreneurs. So does innovation matter? Yes, at every level. It has an impact on economic growth and that shapes development of societies. It shapes the way sectors rise or fall. It shapes what happens at the enterprise level in terms of survival and growth. It's about individuals, particularly this entrepreneurial urge which motivates us. So if it's so important, it's probably worth understanding how it happens and the key skills to work with it.